In a world overrun with the fake, delusional, and disingenuous, he stands as a beacon of truth. He is Abuki Cabal. Listening to Abuki Cabal. Welcome to the Abuki Cabal Show. What's going on, everybody? It's been a long week. Very stressful. My job sucks. But I'll continue doing it because it is. Um, rewarding and whatnot. Uh, at least that's what they tell us. And because I've been doing it so long that I don't know what else to do. That's neither here nor there. Today is a time of celebration. I'd like to thank all of you guys for helping me to hit my first 1,000. 1,000.1. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Now, today, I'll we'll talk about something that's uh, been plaguing us here of late. Within the last two years, it seems like it has been um, really, really on the uptick. And, um, to those who have logical minds, it is it, it, it's it's painful, um, hard to even fathom. You know the the retreat from scientific thinking, linear thinking, the rejection of of anatomy, physiology, biology, reality for the way people feel. Feelings have become paramount. I feel like so, therefore, it is. Let's take a look at today's topic as I continue my celebration of my 1001.1K. Um, let's look at uh, this new show, which deals with the recurring topic that just keeps plaguing us. It just keeps plaguing us. Decepticons are attacking. And with such fervor, I just don't know what to say about it. But before we get going, you know, I just, I got to just, show my appreciation for you guys yet again with a few of my celebratory dance routines 
Here's one for you. Hello. C'est juste ça, non? We get out after 1,000K. That's Alors, how we do it. C'est juste ça, non? Chere, hlavne, prash. Цвилый каштан на Днепро И в узком духмяным ветер бьет Все океаны идут на гидропад Гидропарцы наша словно мрия Цвилый каштан на Днепро И в узком духмяным ветер бьет Все океаны идут на гидропад Гидропарцы наша словно мрия Свилы каштаны на Днепром И пуском духмяным ветер бьет So we have Dr. Phil back in January on the 20th. He uh, had on a gentleman who addressed the um, LGBT guest on the show about their beliefs about non-binary identification. And he pretty much held their feet to the fire. Um, the title of this is, you know, when Decepticons attack. The title of the article is, what is a woman? Controversy after Dr. Phil puts non-binary guests against a conservative. Uh, you know, um, a conservative. I mean, he didn't have to be a conservative. He could have been a, a realist, you know. But let's let's look into it. See what you guys think. And it was uh, covered by uh, the Daily Citizen here. And um, Matt Walsh is the um, the guy who basically um, spoke with these these individuals. So here it is on a, on a Twitter post. I'll, I'll play it for you guys and let you guys see, see it. Uh, it says here's the part on Dr. Phil where I demonstrate uh, that the gender experts cannot even define the word woman or explain what they mean when they use it. And this goes into, you know, I'll be doing a couple other, you know, a couple other shows on, on, on how this is, this confusion has, you know, started out with bathrooms you know, and now it's moved up and, and it started out with bathrooms as it usurped um, and stepped over uh, the dead black men uh, who basically started up uh, the movement um, with Black Lives Matter. Um, and basically they started overlapping their signs, which is, you know, um, trans lives matter and all these other, you know, um, rainbow signs started coming up and it just took over the entire, uh, situations. And now we don't even talk about the black men anymore. You know, and, um, you know how I like stats. If you go and you take it upon yourself to look up the uh, stats and I may, um, go ahead and, and do it for you and put it into the, uh, into the links of how many, um, LGBT people, uh, were killed um, during the time of uh, 2015 up until currently. And you look at the number of black men who had been killed during that same amount of time. And you look up the same number of how many black women were killed in that time. You look at how many, how many, you know, white women and white men were killed in that time. And you'll see that the number is very, very small, you know, and it seems like there's a whole lot of um, uh, explosive power being packed behind um, a number that people presume to be, uh, larger than what it is. You know, um, they took the momentum, uh, for, um, that, that we had towards addressing a problem, uh, that was dealing with, uh, with black males who were being, being indiscriminately killed for no reason whatsoever. 
and overlapped it again. You know, I don't want to be repetitive, but um, well, let's move on. I'm going to let you listen to this segment here, which is two minutes and 17 seconds. And that's a question I would like to throw out to you know, other members of the panel, actually, because just like the four-year-old can't answer what is a girl, well, this is one of the problems with this left-wing gender ideology is that no one who espouses it can even tell you what these words mean. Like, what is a woman? Well, can you tell me what a woman is? No, I can't. Because but, it's not for me to say. I, okay. Womanhood. This is a woman who identifies as a man but can't tell you what a woman is. Looks different for everybody. What do, you, what do you define a woman as? An adult human female. And what does a female mean? Uh, well, well, that's how do you, how do you define a someone with, with female reproductive organs. Okay. Someone who's, you know, here's the thing. When you're, when you're female, it goes right down to your bones, your DNA. So that's why if someone dies, okay. we could dig up their bones 100 years from now. We have no idea what they believed in their head, but we can tell what sex they were okay. because it's, in, it's down in, it's, it's in, ingrained in every fiber of their being. Interesting. So I'm trying to understand your. And you can't get around that. Every fiber of their being. That's how we dig up, you know, crow magnet humans. And we can tell who is male and who is female. You know. But now we've gotten to a point to where you want us. And this is a man who. <laughs> Uh, feels like he's a woman, but yet still wears a, a beard and mustache. Okay. Um, hmm. Crazy. I could be wrong. I mean, it could be they just don't just, just subscribe to anything. They just want to wear all of the attributes of um, women and men and just be an amalgam, uh, uh, amalgamation of, of all of it. You know, and we have them, too. You know, they just want to be indiscriminate they, and they just want to basically. And then what this comes down to is just sexuality. You want to have sex with everything and everybody. That's human. OK. And you just don't want to have to choose, you know, and that's it's just a raggedy way of thinking. But let's let's move on. The definition is that a woman is someone who is female, you said, right? Correct. Gotcha. Is okay. a biological female. So what happens if we have. Maybe someone who is female identifies as a woman, right? You know, cisgender woman, right? As you explained, as you just explained. I hate that, cisgender. Maybe doesn't have the ability to reproduce. Okay, so here you have this illogical thinking. Well, you have a woman, but she, and you want to break this woman down is what, what he's saying, uh, is uh, you want to break this woman down to um, just her sexual anatomy. Uh, but she can't reproduce. So in his mind, because she can't reproduce, she's not a woman. That's illogical thinking. She's a woman, whether she can re reproduce or not. That has nothing to do with it. When you break down her genetics and her chromosomes, she is a woman, a human female. You can't get around that. But in their minds, they can't deal with the logic that is I can never be what I feel like I am. You know, uh, their feelings matter more than reality. Maybe it doesn't have those organs that you're talking about well, that are reproductive well, organs. I have answered the question. You stood up here and And there is no biological female that is born and, and who it, she basically makes a, well, he makes another jump that it, it, they may not have those organs. They may not. Well, if you don't have those organs, you know, um, you're born uh, with abnormalities, but you still uh, can be defined as a male or a female genetically. You still can't get around that. So this person is is clearly not educated um, in the in the in the sciences in order to even make this kind of claim. Uh, and, and and watch how he he destroys them to the point to where they can't even answer the question. Said trans women are women. Yes. Tell me what you mean. What is a woman? Womanhood is something that, just as Ethan explained, I cannot define because I am not but myself. You used the word. So what did you mean when you said trans women are women? If you don't know what it means, right? So here's the thing. So I do not define what a woman is because I do not identify as a woman. Womanhood is something that is an umbrella term. It includes people that who that describes what. People who identify as a woman. Identify as what? As a woman. Okay. See, he can't. He can't. He can't it doesn't compute. You see? 
as a woman, as if as if a woman is just self-defined. It's not self-defined. A woman is a is something that is definable. OK, just as being a man is something that is definable. But these people are making it into this cloud mysticism uh, that 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 to where, you know, you can just make up what a man or a woman is as if it can be, you know, ripped from a child and, and they can be whatever they want to be, you know. And that's why we're having some of these other problems where uh, they're going to have repercussions into the future that these people never seem to care about. They never seem to care about the future ramifications of their decisions right now on these other people who are depending on the older people, the older generations to teach them the basics. These people are in the process of destroying the most basic of basics about what it is to be human male or female. Now, the confusion that's going to come about with that, um, it, it, we don't know into the future. We can guess, you know, um, uh, they, they, you know, people have, have said that it would never get to this point. Um, but there was, uh, I cannot remember her name. You guys are going to murder me for this, but um, I can't remember what her name is, but um, she was a black lady who was talking about the feminization of black males um, I know, I mean, you guys, you know, shoot it to me in my, in my comments so I can, I can add it. Um, but, um, she spoke about this and everybody laughed at her and, and, and thought that it wouldn't, wouldn't get to this point. Well, it's here. It's here. She's gone. Now. I think she's, she's passed now, but it's here. And this is what it looks like. What is that? was to each their own. Each woman, each man, each person is going to have a different relation with their own gender identity and define it differently. And so I'm trans women are women too. Okay. So and you want to, you, hold you on, hold on. Trans you want to reduce, you, you listen, listen. Tell me you want to reduce, means, so you that's the reduce problem. women, you want to reduce men down to maybe just their genetics, our genitals, no. our chromosomes, right? That's what you're what saying. You want to do is that's what what, you, what you want to do is appropriate women. You want to appropriate womanhood Okay. And turn it into basically a costume that could be worn. I wholeheartedly agree. Wholeheartedly agree. Being a man or woman has been been reduced to a costume. I mean, that is the best descriptive uh, effort that I have seen uh, used with this. Uh, and it's not that. It's not that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not that. You know, nobody can just come and put on a costume and, and be a man or be a woman. There's a lot more to it. Some of it is beyond description. You know, being a man, I can't describe to a woman what a man is. So a woman trying to be a man is only going to emulate what she sees from the exterior. Okay. And it's the same, you know, vice versa. So what they, what they, uh, what this is the, <laughs> this is the highest form of envy. Um, that you can imagine, you know, uh, emulation based on envy of another or another gender. And that's what we're seeing. I mean, a case in point, you look at, you look at, 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 uh, at, at most lesbians and they emulate what they believe it is to be a man down to, uh, strapping on, uh, male genitalia and walking around as if it's, it's permanently attached and expecting the women that they're hitting on uh, to react as if it's real. I can give you, if you want this amount of length, I can give you that. If you want this amount of girth, I can give you that. You know what I mean? And they walk around. You, I mean, it's look, I, I mean, it is the most fascinating thing to, to sit up and watch these people uh, um, uh, out trying to convince other, I mean, uh, well, females, other females to, to engage with them uh, uh, physically by emulating what they think it is to be a man. It is fascinating, you know, and the same thing uh, uh, with uh, the, the, on the other end, you see a man uh, 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 acting as if they're a woman based on everything that they love, even though they say that they don't about the exterior of females. You know, um, it's a, a, a precarious uh, position that we're in 
uh, the more comfortable society seems to get. It seems like the more extraneous bullshit comes in uh, and is allowed, you know, because, you know, um, I can do it. I should be able to do it. You know, it's like other things when, when we were just worrying about, you know, um, uh, living, raising our children, um, our jobs, uh, you know, and, you know, the politics of, of not being killed, you know, uh, it, th- these things didn't come into, into play as much, but now the more comfortable this society gets, the more you start seeing other things come in. Well, I feel like I'm a woman. I feel like I'm, I should be, um, uh, categorized as a, you know, as a giraffe, you know, I should, I should be able to change my eyes. I should be able to have foot long eyelashes. I should be able to have, you know, the, the hair of a woman, uh, from India. I should, you know, it, and you just see more and more and more of it. And, um, it's, I think it's, it almost presents itself like different manifestations of greed. You know, I got this, so I'm going to move on to something else. You know, you have, you know, uh, 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 all these attempts to, uh, get rid of the things that, uh, that, that stratify the process of choosing a mate. And, it's just crazy. Not only choosing a mate, but how these individuals obtain uh, extra resources by emulating um, other genders. But let's read the read the read the rest of the article here. I'm not gonna long stroke you as uh, as the lead attorney says. I love that. Uh, you guys check out the lead attorney if you get a chance. Uh, he's he's great, man. Okay, Walsh knows. On the other hand, that woman has a biological reality. Being female born with an XY chromosome and having female reproductive organs, he politely and clearly made his point. Humans come in two forms, male and female. We don't redefine all of our humanity based on some struggle with this or because gender ideology tries to tell us something different. The wide-ranging conversation went on to discuss pronouns along with activist demands that people be forced to use gender confused individuals pronouns of choice. Addison said that his pronouns are they and them while Ethan said her pronouns are he and they. Okay. So Walsh said you can have whatever self perception you want but you can't expect me to take part in that self-perception or take part in this kind of this charade, this theatrical production. I agree with him 110%. That's what this is. You know, it's, it's, it's almost a uh, tantamount to having a person who is mentally ill, who says, that he's made of Skittles and wants you to call him Skittle man. That's what this is. This, this is the same exact thing. If you have never seen people who are mentally ill and their perceptual manifestations and whatnot, and their uh, perception of what reality is, and you don't see medical professionals going in there and saying, Hey, let's just go with it. Let's allow him to be Skittle man. You know, we don't we don't see that. No one does that because we have a duty and an obligation to try to help these people. To get back to normality. But here we have a group of people who are trying to define normality as if they are Green Lanterns. You're just going to make a, a construct. And, and And just make it real based on, you know your belief system and you expect all of society to conform to your narrow perception of what is real. Have you ever seen in the history of mankind anything like this before? Never. Never. And I'm a student of history and I'm still looking. So let's move on. You don't get to get your own pronouns, just like you don't get your own 
prepositions or your own adjectives. It's like if I were to tell you my adjectives are handsome and brilliant, and whenever you're talking about me, you have to describe me as handsome and brilliant because that's how I identify. Okay. Okay, here's the second part. There should be no construct of gender, just sex. You're either male or female. Right. And someone feeling in a mental, emotional way that they don't identify with the sex that they have been biologically created as and assigned at birth based on their genitalia, if they don't feel that way, that there's no construct that describes that, experiences that. Well, that's got nothing to do with the reality. So you can feel however you want. I mean, I could sit here and say that I feel like a tomato plant, but that doesn't mean that I actually am those things. So your, your self-perception, you can have whatever self-perception you want, but you can't expect me to take part in that self-perception or to take part in this kind of charade, this theatrical production. You don't get your own pronouns, just like you don't get your own prepositions or your own, your own adjectives. You know, it's like if I were to tell you, my adjectives are handsome and brilliant. And no matter, whenever you're talking about me, you have to describe me as handsome and brilliant because that's how I identify. It makes no sense. You don't get your own pronouns. These are, that's, that's, that's grammar, that's language. So you think it's a delusion. Someone is self-delusional. Yeah, I think it's, it's delusion. It could be a mental illness. It could be, a, it's, it's a lot of different things. With, with children, wow. you know, there, there's also just a basic confusion that all kids have. Like, that's why when you hear, when you, when you hear someone, a parent say, oh, my four-year-old, uh, son came, came to me and said that uh, I'm a girl now, and so that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise him as a girl. No, you're, you're a four-year-old, I have four kids. When a four-year-old boy comes to you and says, oh, I'm a girl, here's a good follow-up question. What is a girl? Ask him what he means by that. What do you mean by girl? And when you, when you ask him that, here's what he'll tell you. He will tell you what he really means is that he, he wants to do some of the things that girls do, like play with the dollhouse, or, or you know, he likes the color pink. That's fine, play with the dollhouse but you're still a boy. There you go. There you go. I like this guy. All right. Here we go. And you see how they got, they got really in their feelings about him saying that it was mental health. Okay. Um, for those of us who have, uh, have studied uh, psychology, we used to have the DSM four. Now it's the DSM four TR. So it's been, uh, it was revised. Okay. The old DSM-4 uh, categorized uh, homosexuality and uh, transsexuality as a mental illness, but that was removed. And I think it was removed over time. And I'm going to have to do some research into this. Um, BGS, if, if you can, you know, I'm, I'm going to reach out to BGS. I'm going to reach out to uh, Dr. Tia San and uh, also Green Gorilla uh, 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 and um uh, Dr. Ron O'Neill and, uh, you know, see if we can, we can, uh, track down, you know, where this, this, uh, this change and why this change came about from what, from what I can tell when I did look into it before, uh, it looked like there were, there were political, um, forces, uh, at play that eventually got that term removed, not medical, um, uh, forces that were that, that got the term removed based on new data or whatever the case may be. But they've been trying forever, you know, every every since that has happened to prove that there is a gay gene or a um, something that is natural that that, that causes this to uh, to happen and, and thus uh, legitimize it uh, in the eyes of people so that that it will be more accepted. You know, so uh, that is a short you know, uh, uh, shot at, at what happened, but let's move on. Okay. Along with some parents, uh, and a professor, the group also discussed privacy and safety in showers, restrooms, and locker rooms. Walsh and the parents want sex segregated facilities for men and women, rather than opening these spaces to anyone based on how they identify. Walsh said, the left cares only about feelings of 
those with sexual identity confusion, but they dismiss the concerns of girls who don't want boys in their private facilities or vice versa for that matter. Uh, also, uh, girls who have to swim against boys, uh, girls who have to run track against boys who identify as girls, all of these things, they don't give a shit about uh, uh, the, the term they, they made up, cisgender people. It's they're trying to make everything revolve around this small uh, uh, number of people who um, live this way in society. OK, Wall said the left. OK. Excuse me, I already read that part right uh, after Walsh brought up the cases of the gender confused boy who raped a teen girl in. Ladoon County Public Schools restroom, Susan D'Enbro, assistant professor in the communication studies department at Kent State University, said, I'm not trying to minimize your concerns around it, but I don't know that it's a safety issue. Thus, she totally minimized his concerns for those girls who don't want male bodies in the in their private spaces. Watch the video. OK, that's the same thing. That's that's some of the same things that we've been talking about where. You know, women don't want men in their spaces uh, uh, any more than men want women in the spaces in their spaces and then have to deal with, you know, sexual situations that that, that we don't we don't want. You know, and here's the same thing. Oh, damn those kids. As long as we get to run around and do what the fuck we want to do and be be uh, be be transgendered or, or be uh, uh, alphabet mafia. And here we go. How do you feel about the gender neutral bathrooms and locker rooms? Yeah, well, I agree with my fellow my fellow Matt over here. Loudoun County is a famous case of the Daily Wire. We helped uncover uh, there was a, a gender nonconforming boy in a dress who went into a went to a girl's restroom and raped, violently raped uh, a, a young girl. After that happened, that's when this, the school district decided, oh, you know what, now we're going to open up the restrooms and uh, invite the, the boys in with the girls. Now, here's what happens, because we hear a lot about, well, gender nonconforming people, transgender people, uh, it, it makes them feel bad if, they don't, if, they're not, if they're not given access to the bathrooms they want. Well, okay, I, so they have their feelings. What about the feelings of the girls who are getting raped? There are many girls and many women who are speaking out and saying, we want privacy in our facilities. We don't want a man in the in the bathroom with us. Mm -hmm. And then what we hear Most from what we hear from this side, what, what, we hear, what we hear from this side, I did not is, say that we want open bathrooms where anyone okay. can go in. What we hear from this side is that well, their feelings don't matter. We're not going. We, who, who cares? And see, this is how this is a, a, a an attempt to basically throw him off his game, throw him off so that he can't finish his line of thought. So, you know. This you'll, you'll you'll see this a lot of times if you don't you know, pay attention, you'll see this a lot of times with the alphabet mafia and with with, you know, with with women who, you know, don't like what you're saying or men, for that matter, that don't like what you're saying. They're going to try to throw you off your game to try to make you shuffle, make you make you carry, you know, as they say in basketball. You know. So this is a way to disrupt your momentum. You know, don't fall for that shit ever. You just have to deal with it, right? Because the transgender people, the gender nonconforming people, it's, it's their feelings that take priority. I'm not trying to minimize your concern around it, but I. OK, now before she gets going, OK, let's. Let's take into consideration that um, these cisgendered uh, females are the majority of the people who use these female bathrooms. So you're opening it up to a small sector of people um, who are having to go to the bathroom and, and want to use these female facilities. Okay. So then what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to pull resources. They're going to have to have somebody stand out there while this person goes to the bathroom, goes and do, do what they do, what they do inside this female bathroom in order to prevent, you know, someone who is a, a, a person who is, is not what they say they are. No pun intended. Um, doing something nefarious, you know, in the, in the bathroom, uh, trying to get at, get at women. Um, and she just can't even wrap her mind around it because she wants to, she wants desperately to support them in doing whatever they want to do. Watch this.
I don't know that it's a safety issue. Um, yes, and, uh, it's a you safety issue. You still have another bathroom that it's you can a, go no, to. No, no, it's security a issue. Security My daughter issue. would not feel safe or secure if she had to share a bathroom or a gender-neutral locker room with boys. Now, you see how she just minimized the hell out of that? But you don't get that same energy when 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 they start using the R word about, you know, these women who have been violated. You don't you don't feel that. Then they start talking about putting setting up special times. Men can't go into these areas and 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 during certain times and we need to make it illegal for this and that and blah blah. They move heaven and earth when it's women against men. But when it's women for the alphabet folks, they will fucking backpedal uh, as if they are uh, uh, covering uh, a, a deep pass. And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You look at the double standard that's going down. They're not even trying. They're not trying to protect these women. They're not. You got a man there trying to protect this woman from the, 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 the possibility of being taken advantage of by somebody who comes in dressed in sheep's clothing. But the woman don't give a shit. I mean, how does that make y'all feel? I mean, y'all, please, please expound upon this in the comments because it makes me feel really, really uh, um, uh, uh, bad that you see this and you see that everything is, is moving, not because of reality, but it's moving. She had to look up in the sky and put together some shit to respond to his his uh, position and this family's, you know, uh, uh, a position about trying to protect their daughter from being you know, potentially put in a situation where she may be uh, propositioned sexually in a place that's, that's neither appropriate uh, for that or appropriate for a boy to be in there in the first place or anybody with, with, with a boy's uh, um, uh, junk anatomy. OK, let's move on. Walsh also explained the importance of pushing back against gender rhetoric. When asked if D. Enbro, uh, by D. Enbro, why he cares so much about this issue. See, that's another thing they do. Why do you care? Why do you care? There must be something wrong with you if you care about this issue. Or then they start, you know, this is that shaming tactics uh, that they throw out there to make you back up off of something that that is significant and that needs to be addressed. You know, they, they try to shame you into into you know, identifying why it matters to you. And you, as a man, you shouldn't have to have to do that. You can talk about whatever the hell you want to talk about. You know, he's there. He's a guest and he has a concern about it. That's why he's there. Again, that's another tactic. Don't fall for that. You know, don't let anybody remove your agency from you as far as wh uh, whether, you know, what you want to study, what you 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 want to care about. OK. Or your your uh, attempts to to better society. All right. So then he explained, I care about the truth. I care about children and these insane ideas about gender are being foist on kids. I don't know if that means forced or if he wants to say forced. He said, I care about the women who are having their opportunities stolen from them. Now, here you have a man advocating for women and you have a woman advocating for alphabets. There's biological sex and then there is gender identity. Part of me wants to ask why you care so much, uh, because right. it's really right. not that big of a deal. Oh, yeah. Can I answer that? Um, I, I, I'd, love to, I'd love to answer that question. I, I care about the truth. So, so basic truth matters. I want to live in a society where people okay, care about fine. the truth and we're grounded in truth. Right. Um, I care about children and this, these ins See, she didn't like his answer. I care about the truth. And then she waves him off. Disrespectful to the other person in the debate, which is not that's that's not, you know, <laughs> That's not acceptable. Go back and look at debates, you know, during William F. Buckley's time and uh, during the civil rights era. There was a, an etiquette that, that took place during debates. You know, go back and look at when they had had debates between feminism 
and and conservatives during that time and look at how they conducted themselves. Anytime a person tries to destroy you in a debate by waving off your claims as if uh, they're nothing, it's because they have no argument to make. Let's move on. Sane ideas ideas about gender are being are being foist on kids. um, And that that bothers me quite a bit. I care about the women who are having their opportunities stolen from them. I care quite a bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and women are having their opportunities stolen from them. But see, they don't give a shit about that. They don't care. And then you you see that she's on the fringes. I mean, she's got snakes and shit all down her arms. I mean, she might be part of these witches and whatnot, you know, but she is is clearly on the fringe of what uh, what is considered to be female, you know. That's not how your average female carries themselves. Okay. All right. So she's advocating not for women, but she's advocating for these folks over here. All right. Okay. Walsh gave important reasons why all Christians should be concerned about these issues and why we should oppose gender ideology, even while we love and care for those struggles, struggling with sexual identity, brokenness, Uh, Addison and Ethan, run a consulting firm in Los Angeles called Breaking the Binary, where they performed numerous training workshops and speaking engagements for organizations and conferences throughout the state of California and beyond. Okay, so they have an agenda. They're making money off of this. You know, and they want to break the binary, which which so the the majority, uh, uh, the normal needs to be broken in order to make way for this new ideology of being gender fluid, you know, and we've seen what that looks like too. I mean, we we saw what happened when genuine was on that panel and the lady was saying, why won't you date me? I am a woman. I, I identify as a woman. He said, but you're not a woman. You're not a woman. You know, and then the person tried to lean in and kiss, kiss him, you know, and he was like, no, nah, I don't do that. What you doing? You know? So, you know, if a man were to do that, to a woman that will be, you know, an unwanted advance. And it could, it could, you know, go even further if you went past that. But here you have, you know, a, a, a gender uh, fluid person who's trying to uh, uh, force themselves on a, a straight guy and saying that he's wrong for not, you know, dating a person because they believe that they're believe and they are dressed up as a woman. Okay. One of the main reasons why I think that that makeup is the devil. It's a makeup is of the devil. Long ass eyelashes are of the devil. Weave is of the devil. Yes, because all it is is a way for people to do things and trick people and uh, into thinking that there's something that they're not. That's what it is. It's just a way for them to you know, to make you make you comfortable uh, visually, because look, we cue biologically, we cue off of certain things. You know, when you see certain attributes of of a female human being as a man, you ping off of those because it's a part of your basic programming to ping off of that for what is another part of our basic programming, which is procreation. You know, so these people, um, uh, these people, uh, 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 and I think this came along, you know, with, with the sexual revolution and whatnot, you know, and, and, and you know, th- this ideology that basically, you know, you should be able to just be uh, have sex and just, you know, have fun and just do whatever the hell you want to do. And look, I am no, uh, uh, adversary of people, you know, having sex and doing what the fuck they want to do. You know, uh, I, I, we all have our weaknesses and whatnot, but, uh, we all have to, to, um, exist within the parameters of our basic programming. And these people are trying to break the machine. They're trying to break the basic programming that makes us human. Okay. Now they can do that. They can go find them a place and and do that, you know, but when it starts trying, you start trying to reprogram the kids and shit to where they're all out here doing anything and everything. Guess what? That is going to have repercussions that they don't give a shit about because they'll be dead by the time, uh, you know, it, it, it comes about, you know, these people are running around doing the things that they do 
based off of the, the, the gains of other people's struggles in society. And they're taking it further and further and further to benefit themselves, not to benefit society, but to benefit themselves. Think about that. All right. All right. So the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health, uh, Occidentally, Occidental College, uh, USC Keck School of Medicine, 2026, White House convened a conference advancing LGBT progress in rural America are listed among the places they presented, illustrating how far this ideology has permeated into the area of our world. So there you have it. You see them munching into um, the rest of the country in order to make people um, uh, accept this type of behavior. And I'm going to show you a little something here. This is a uh, some of the data that's been put into a a, a moving um, a depiction show that to show you how many people are leaving California and where they're moving. One, because it's just too damn expensive to live in California. And two, um, you know, California may be getting a little bit too wild for everybody, you know. But as they move over here, it's causing all kinds of other problems, hell, high rent and and everything else. So they're making it to where it's, you know, the places where they move are, are, are going to be um, difficult to live in, too, for the people who have been indigenous to those areas, because they come with an expectation about how much money they can make, how much money people should make. And the people there don't make that much, you know, and we've talked about that a little bit. We'll probably get into that a little bit more. Um, I shared this with BGS so that he can, you know, uh, give a breakdown of this. He'll probably do a, a lot better job than me. Um, I can try, but, you know, it's just not my my area. So I'm going to let you take a look at this. OK, look at how many people have moved away from this area from 2015 to 2019. So 2020 and 2021 has not been added to that. And they're moving all away from California, all down south, New York, Boston, Maine, East Coast. You know. All those people. Moving away from the area. That's as a result of some of this new wave thinking that's going on, you know? So um, despite Walsh's clarity and calm demeanor on Dr. Phil, both non-binary identified guests were upset about their gender ideology being questioned. Who cares? Who cares? You're in a debate and your position is going to be questioned. If you if you can't stand it, don't you know, don't don't get up into the debate uh, chair. So Walsh tweeted posts from Addison and Ethan saying they've been experiencing heightened levels of anxiety, nightmares and depression spiralings spirals since the taping. They claim they were attacked by another guest and played by the produ producers and ask people to send them good vibes rather than sending good vibes. Believers should pray for the salvation and healing of these troubled individuals. Walsh was a model of civility and respectfulness, even when completely disagreeing with the LGBT activists and allies on Dr. Phil. He didn't attack them as individuals, but he did question their beliefs and explain the truth. Likewise, we encourage all believers to understand the truth about this issue and speak kindly and respectfully to those who distort God's good design for humanity. OK. All right. So this was, you know, this was Christian for those of y'all who ain't Christian, you know. Uh, OK. You know, but uh, the man did a great job. And and what, what can we learn about this? Um, in our community is that when we do these debates with these, you know, with these people who, who uh, want to um, remove themselves from the parameters of reality, um, conduct yourself like Mr. Mr. Walsh did. Okay. Address the points, be clear and concise and destroy their arguments. You don't have to be, you don't have to be an asshole. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to, 
to uh, do any of the stuff that they're going to accuse you of doing, whether you did it or not. You know, so then basically what they did was they say they don't identify as woman, but the, but then they 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 take make a woman's move. In order, and, 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 you know, I'm hurt. Oh, my feelings. I I have PTSD because I felt attacked. That, did he look like he felt attacked? He uh, this one here with the beard and the wig, you know, or I don't know, maybe that's his hair. Did he feel did he look like he was attacked? See, because there's another aspect of this. If you look at these people during the taping, you see their responses. This person didn't, didn't feel attacked. This person was on the attack saying, well, oh, uh, I thought we weren't going to interrupt each other. And, and, you know, a person like that doesn't a person who feels like they're they're afraid of their opponent don't respond like that. OK, so let's move to some of the, you know, the other uh, publications that covered this. Here's uh, uh, what is this? Glad talking about Dr. Phil to re-air the problematic transgender episode. Okay, let's see what they had to say. The Dr. Phil program plans to re-air the October uh, 2008 episode that misrepresented transgender children and features the biased view of the anti-LGBT uh, activists on the October 29, 2008 Sh uh, episode of Dr. Phil Titer, Gender Confused Kids. Dr. Phil McGraw interviewed transgender children and their parents. The show featured two guests, Dr. Dan Segal. Wait a minute. I think this is a different one. Okay. This isn't the, isn't the same show. This is a different show. Okay. This was a show that they did in, 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 in 2008. Okay. Where the same, some of the same things were addressed, but yeah, let's get into this. Okay. Um, Dan Segal, uh, from UCLA who specializes in pediatrics, uh, and transgender, transgender, transgender issues. Sorry, I got to slow down. Uh, as we, as well as Glenn Stanton research fellow for the anti LGBT, uh, organization focus on the family while Dr. Siegel, and why is it anti LGBT? If it's focusing on families, do LGBT people focus? I mean, do they make families? OK, let's move on. Um, Dr. Siegel offered credible insight on transgender issues backed by research and medical experience. Stanton baselessly asserted that children develop transgender identities after parents fail to enforce gender roles. The program's choice uh, to present Stanton's biased and unreliable uh, perspective as professional counterpart to Dr. Siegel's medical uh, expertise earned the episodes a place on Glass 2008 edition of Best and Worst of National News Coverage. Several viewers uh, wrote Dr. Fields in response to the problematic episode to voice concern about the platform uh, the Dr. Phil program afforded <laughs> to the anti-LGBT uh, organization focused on the family and which followed the FOF to perpetuate misinformation about transgender children. As a result, Dr. Phil producers reached out to GLAD and asked for better resources for future uh, coverage and worked with GLAD to prepare a follow-up show that featured Dr. Michael Angelo, a specialist in transgender issues. Dr. Uh, Angelo joined Seagal, uh, Seagal as another insightful commentator on that show episode. However, again, uh, featured anti-LGBT activist Glenn Stanton, who as well as Joseph Nicolosi, uh, a so-called ex-gay activist from the discredited fringe organization NARTH, a National Association for the Research and Therapy of Homosexuality. You can read about the, them uh, on this uh, deal they did here. Uh, the link. Uh, as noted, Glad's critique of the follow-up episode, there are still no modern peer-reviewed studies that support the so-called ex-gay groups. Uh, studies that lend credibility to their outdated and long abandoned theories about the nature of sexual orientation or gender identity. So see here were the efforts 
back in the early 2000s, them trying to destroy gender identity and make everything fluid. And, you know, I think, and this is my, my, my opinion that if you do not, you know, if you, if you take a, a human, you know, uh, and you, you raise, they're raised by wolves, they'll think they're a wolf. They will walk like a wolf, run like a wolf, eat raw meat, like a wolf. They will not uh, develop language. Okay. And if you raise them in a situation where they they are gender fluid, they will think that gender fluidity is a thing. Okay, trust me, there is there's there's research on this. There's psychology, psychological research on this on on isolationism uh, uh, and and children who were uh, found uh, in situations that um, that indicate such. Okay. But they don't like these things because anything that 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 I mean, they, they will will tout peer review studies when it comes to that. But they won't tout any peer review studies that are, are against what they're trying to do. But I'll, I'll uh, put this in the comments also, you know, and uh, you guys go ahead and look at the they've got a couple of comments down here. Those may be entertaining. And that's from Glad. OK, here's the other one. Now, uh, this is on Out Magazine that talked about the show. Dr. Phil had an anti trans activist on his show to debate pronouns. Okay. And they go through their little deal here and the comments on here are great. You guys go through, look at the comments on there. It's uh, it's short, uh, but basically uh, on January 19th, Dr. Phil McGraw, long running daytime talk show, uh, Phil uh, host, uh, Phil, uh, Dr. Phil conservative daily wire host, Matt Walsh uh, was uh, sat set in on a discussion with a non-binary couple identified as Ethan and Addison to discuss what the show called the gender pronoun debate. At one point on the show, on the episode, Walsh said those who believe in the left wing gender ideology to being just like a four year old who can't even answer what a girl is and reduces the concept of womanhood to a generalized biological condition. No, he didn't. But you see the the wording and how they they try to destroy your argument, and, and he's not even here to even put his side to it. They basically just produce a one sided uh, a characterization of of what he did on that show uh, with baseless um, accusations. All right, and uh, womanhood is a general biological condition. Uh, it is that's what it is. You come out a woman, you, you're, you're, you basically expelled from a, from a woman's womb and you're either a male or a female. I mean, that's a fact. Prove it, prove, disprove me, uh, in this situation. And, uh, I'll, I'll gladly, um, uh, um, uh, debate you on that any day. There's no evidence to the contrary. All right. So when both Ethan and Addison, neither of whom identify as female or as woman were asked to define what a woman is. Addison responded by saying, I do not define what a woman is because I do not identify as a woman. Womanhood is an umbrella term that describes people who identify as woman. Hmm. As a woman. Okay. And again, he asked him, what is that? but they couldn't tell you what a woman is. If you tell them, okay, if you can ask them, what is a female? They, they couldn't answer that either because they'll, 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 uh, they'll uh, try to mash that up into something that you believe and not something that is. Okay. So when, um, All right. So womanhood is an umbrella term was identified as woman. OK, each person has their own relationship with the gender gender identity. That's bull crap. That's bull crap. You know, and, you know, women, women who are women know what a woman is, you know, and you can't do that. You know, and I've had a, I had a conversation with a friend of mine and she said the same thing. She said, look, I don't respect that. You know, a woman has periods. A woman has cramps. A woman has has things that these people have no idea about. You know, they, there's a physiology about being a woman that they will never, ever identify with. And she was offended. 
but but they don't put those people up on 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 the shows, you know. Um, they don't talk to to real women about what what a womanhood is, and they don't talk to women who feel like their position in society is being being uh, uh, usurped by a fringe group of people who believe that there's something that these people truly are and who have had to live through uh, whatever situations which um, uh, they fought for in order for them to get whatever rights or whatever um, uh, they uh, have at this point. But these people are going to come in and, and usurp that. And then you have other women who are helping them to do it, which is another part of the debate entirely. All right. While the audience appreciated the answer, Walsh accused Addison of wanting to appropriate womanhood and turn it into basically a costume that can be worn. Walsh took to his Twitter account to brag about his performance during the debate on Dr. Phil um, through the facts, though the fact still remains that trans people's identities are not a debate. Yes. Yes, they are. Okay. Okay. All right, they go on and say uh, Walsh, a noted right wing blogger and media personality, also uh, authored Johnny and the Walrus, a children's book, Pink News called Hateful and Transphobic and that LGBTQ nation called anti-transgender, describing it as intending to mock transgender youth, comparing the experience of a gender dysphoria of gender dysphoria to pretending to be a walrus. He says he wrote the book to protect our kids from that brainwashing. While McGraw gave Walsh a platform to spew his hate, uh, he notably did not give space or time to those who could speak and report on the terrible real life and often violent effects that kind of anti-transgender rhetoric can have on trans folks. Okay, and therein goes into... Um, when these people um, are are talking about the effects of this and all the, you know, they they're using the same same tactic as people saying that you know uh, women are being accosted, the feminists use. They're using some of the same tactics that the feminists use. And if you go back and you and you you know you you read uh, read up on on that, I mean, these people, the the founders of the second wave uh, of feminism, uh, were not above lying to get the uh, results that they wanted. Uh, it's covered in a, in a new show on, on, uh, on Netflix about the feminist movement. Um, there's another documentary on there called feminism. What were we thinking? You look on there and you see just how, how, uh, what, what um, uh, people had to go through. You look at those women of color and what they had to go through. Uh, uh, when the, uh, the feminist movement wanted their numbers They wanted their numbers. They didn't want their voices. They wanted their numbers to vote for the equal uh, uh, equal rights amendment. You know, so um, you go and you look at that and 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 then you try to uh, add that to the modern day. Get some historical context off of that. You know, and, uh, you know, you tell me what you think about that. And. uh, You know, it it is a uh, a very. Uh, interesting place uh, to be um, when trying to have this debate with these people. And um, it is truly uh, a fight worth fighting, I think. You know, we're going to have to um, start standing up for the truth, folks, because if we don't, you don't stand up for the truth then people will uh, repatriate that that truth to be their own. The the history that you're that you're reading mostly now is written by the victor. You can lay down if you want to. And um, just go along to get along, which is is what a lot of people are willing to do. Just let them do whatever they want to do, you know. Forget about it. You know, uh, they're just trying to get health benefits so that they can get into the hospital to watch their dying, you know, uh, um, a partner or whatever the case may be, you know, but 
they're exposing people who don't want to be exposed to um, a, a sector of um, this is sexuality, which um, shouldn't even be an issue. You know, um, you go in, you apply for a job. You know, um, I've never seen where you go up into a job and I mean, you say male or female, they don't ask you who you're having sex with. But nowadays we have to we have to deal with that. You know, we have to deal with. You know, uh, going into the job, well, uh, I'm so and so, so and so, and I'm a, uh, you know, uh, uh, sociology major or whatever, and uh, uh, I'm also uh, gay. You know, I'm a gay man or I'm a, a gay female, and you know that. Well, what the hell does that have to do with your job? What does it have to do with your job? You know, because. None of us can even discuss sex. I mean, it's, that's part of your, your go look at your rule books. You cannot discuss sexuality or, or, or you know, sex is not supposed to be uh, on the job. But now sex is all over the job. Thank you, Alphabet Mafia. You know, thank you, feminists, for uh, not uh, allowing people uh, to find uh, potential wives at, at work. You know. And date people who they're around for the majority of the time that they are uh, are, are awake during the daytime. You know, uh, you're probably I mean, you look at statistically, uh, where are you most uh, uh, present? You know, you're at your job most of the time, you know, uh, and you're around, uh, especially like if you're in the medical field or, you know, um, in a big complex, the people that you work around the most, you're working 12 hour days, you're working 18 hour days. Hell, that's probably where if you're single where you're probably going to find somebody that you date if it's not someplace when you're not away from the job but the the likelihood of you finding a person um at the place where you work is greater you know so you know i've said a lot uh i think i've gone for quite a while my god i'm getting longer and longer i wanted to keep these short uh if you guys like like the shows shorter let me know if you guys uh, like them um, to be until we're done, you know, let me know. Um, this has been interesting. I hope you guys like it as well. Uh, um, let me know. You guys, all you folks that are watching, you know, the rest of the uh, 60% out there that that, that, that want to, what is it? Yeah, 60% that, that, that hasn't subscribed yet, please, you guys subscribe, you know, and um I appreciate you guys, you know, um, salute to everybody who helped me hit that thousand, you know, and, uh, salute to my subs, salute to, um, uh, the folks who have, uh, donated to the channel. Uh, appreciate that. You know, if you don't feel good about donating to the channel, look, uh, whatever the price of a uh, a grande como uh, macchiato from uh, Starbucks. Hey, that's my drink. I appreciate you guys. I have to work long hours, you know, trying to save lives and whatnot. You know. Nurse making a difference, you know, uh, if you guys could help me out with that, I'd appreciate that. But uh, we are going to. end the show with that. And uh, I hope that you guys um, have a great weekend. I think I'm going to probably crank out some more here and um, get out as many as I can so you guys don't have to wait as long. But please do tell me what you guys think. Um, I really appreciate everybody who has spent the time to um, check me out and um, support the show. I really mean that. Watch out for those Transformers Decepticons out there. You know, they're always on the move. Where can you get Optimus? Where are you, Optimus? But anyway, we're going we're gonna to get out of here. I appreciate you guys. Have a good one.